Hello, I'm Ren, and today we're going to be creating a simple AI character that just moves left and right against these two collision areas here using the default character class for the paper character and some movement inputs. We're going to use the hit event to tell him if he's moving left or right to move in the opposite direction and use a character that we've already made. So I've got our new character here. I can press Control W on that to duplicate it and I'll rename this to enemy character. Or the other thing that we could do is create a new blueprint class, pick character, or go to all classes and type in paper, and pick the paper character. So I'll just use this new enemy character here. And the first thing I need to do is change everything that's uh, already set up. So I'm not going to need any of this saving and loading information, because that might overwrite our save data. I'm not going to be needing this on landed event here, or these on landed flipbooks. I'm not going to need this branch or the is falling animation. Uh, I'm just going to drag over this flipbook here to set him to be moving whether his velocity is more than zero. So the next thing that we need to do is set up uh, the movement input. So we're not going to be using input axis move right, this comparison float, or these booleans, so I can delete all of that. The scale value needs to be 1 because he will always be moving, but the world direction needs to change. So I'll use a selector for select vector, and we'll use that B is moving right boolean as the controller for whether he's moving left or right. And on the hit event, we'll change which direction this is, so whether it's true or false. So we'll be picking A if moving right is true, which means it'll be 1 in the value, so he'll be moving to the right on the X. And if he's moving to the left on the X, it'll be negative 1. So if B moving right is false. So the place we want this to be is on the tick function. So I've already got an event tick down here. So off this event we've got two functions, the direction one and the animation update. So I'll go to this direction one and we'll see here that we're getting the velocity and comparing the float and getting the controller and setting the control rotation. But instead of setting the control rotation in this case, uh, that might not work for a enemy character because it's not being controlled by the player. What we'll do is we'll just grab the sprite from the top left and actually set its local rotation. So set relative rotation. So the next thing we need to do is set the rotation in just one axis. So I'll split that. We'll be changing the yaw. So I'll use a selection off of this. Select float. And we'll be using that boolean again for whether he's moving left or right. And basically if he's moving to the right, I think it's going to be zero and if he's not moving to the right it'll be 180 degrees flipped. So we'll drag that in and then the nodes that we created before for add movement input will actually drag down to this function so that when this uh, function gets called it will execute all of these nodes by dragging this execution pin here into this add movement input. So now it's going to do all of this on tick. Uh, we also don't need this event on landed and I can delete this move input and I can also delete this jump function because this AI won't be jumping. So now that all that is set up, the next thing that I want to do is actually make sure that it's going to collide with our player. So in a previous tutorial, we set up uh, custom collision channels. So I'm going to check those collision channels quickly. And down here in the collision presets, you'll notice it's 2D player. and it, This 2D player does not block the player. So if I click on this node, this drop down node here, and click custom, I'll make sure that it's actually blocking our player. And the way collision channels work is this also needs to happen on the other object. So back in the collision presets again, you'll see that it doesn't block other players on this one. So because of that, they won't block each other. This one's set to overlap, and the enemy's set to block, so they won't talk to each other in terms of the channels. So this also needs to be set to block players. So now that we've done that, I'll go back to the enemy and set up the hit uh, event. So on the capture component down in the events at the very bottom, you'll see the on component hit. So when this gets hit, I want to set B is moving right to be either true or false based on whatever his last movement direction was. So if I get the last movement direction, which is that same boolean, and use a not equal to uh, operator, I'll basically give us the opposite of this uh, value. So if this value is true, we'll get the not true, so it'll be false. And if it's false, we'll get the not false, so it'll be true. And we'll set that. So it basically just flips it. 
so it's a basic toggle. And the other thing we might want to do on this, uh, in a previous tutorial, we set up change health. So if I cast this to our new character, and if the execution pin for the uh, event happening, or true, happens, then we'll actually call change health. If false gets called, then we're not hitting the player, so nothing will happen. So off of here, we'll call change health, which is a function of our player, and we'll call minus one as the amount, and then that'll go through to our player. So this is basically everything set up. Uh, the last thing I want to do is in the viewport is change this sprite so it's the same as uh, the original sprite on the player. So if I go to idle and pick this green one, we'll notice that he's uh, actually set up correctly. So you can do this on your top down characters or your side scrolling characters as well. If I drag this enemy in, I just need to double check that he's on the correct layer. So if I go into perspective and just make sure this is in the right place, so drag this forward a bit, move him up. So now he's uh, he's in the world, and he's going to start moving left and right between these collision volumes. And if I press Alt C, I can toggle those collision volumes to see where they are. So if I press play now, I'll just jump up a bit. We'll see him moving left and right using his animations, and I might actually slow him down a bit. So if I go into that enemy character again, go to the character movement, he's using the default land walking mode. If I scroll down to that, you will see max walk speed. I'll change that to 150. Click save, jump back into my level and check his movement speed again. And now he's moving a lot slower, so he's a bit of an easier obstacle to dodge. I can jump over him now, grab this key and escape. But if I were to fall down into him, you'll see he's actually changing my health and bouncing back and forth based on uh, me being in the way. So that's a simple AI enemy and I hope you guys can make something a little bit more complex out of that basic sort of code. And in the next session we'll be looking at ray casting on a nav mesh using the mouse position and creating a basic point and click controller along with click events for hovering over objects and actually clicking on them to uh, change elements within our game. So. Good luck creating AI, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.